as much as possible. Make sure if you haven't registered, this is your moment to register because that gives you the power to make a decision as to who becomes your next president and that is very, very important for nation building. Therefore, make the effort to go out there and register. It's very important. But so far, the EC, they have done uh, quite a good job over the period. They, they had so much challenges, but they have been able to surmount all the challenges and to the glory of God, it has worked very well. But I think it is important we need to also admonish all of us. Um, this is just voter registration. And even if in the voter registration, people are taking guns and weapons to the centers, then what is going to happen during election time? All right, that is why we must encourage everybody that this is just in the most developed nations and civilized nations and developed nations, voter registration do not just demand uh, party people going there to check who is registering or not. That is not their business, okay? That is the business of the EC, to manage that. And uh, we, we, I think we are becoming an embarrassment. I want to appeal to our politicians. We are becoming an embarrassment to the nation. Uh, their job is not to interfere with these processes. Let's allow the institutions to work. Let's allow the institutions to work. It's very important. I mean, you, you, you go to the developed nations, voter registration, party people don't get involved. You know, whether you are a candidate or not, you don't go and inspect who is registering or not. Let's be civilized for once. Let's show some, some civility. Let's show that we are, getting, we are developing. It's interesting when you find friends who will call you. What is happening in your country, Bishop? I mean, voter registration too, and the MPs and the candidates are going to check who is registering or not. He said, we don't do that in the developed countries. So politicians, please, we appeal to you. You are becoming an embarrassment to the country. You are just a fraction of 5% of the 35 million or 30 million people in Ghana. You can embarrass all of us. This is not good. Because this is not done internationally. Let the world respect Ghana. That at least we are a country that can respect the rules and we can respect our institutions. We are appealing to our credible police officers as much as possible, work with dignity and be neutral. We are aware. And you and I, we know that the police have become a political tool in the hands of any ruling government. The ruling government will always manipulate and control them. But interestingly, Ghana is a very funny country. When the ruling government becomes an opposition, then they are asking the police to be neutral. <laughs> Have you noticed that? It's a funny country, yeah? When the ruling government is in government, they control them. And when they, be, they, they go into opposition, then they're asking the police to be neutral. They know very well how they manipulate the police. The police want to do their job professionally. But they can't do it because they are being manipulated by a ruling government. But when the ruling government becomes an opposition, then they're asking for neutrality. So you see, the problem is not with the police, but the problem is who appoints the police IGP. That is the problem we have, which is our constitution. The constitution has given too much power, therefore whoever appoints the IGP always manipulates the system. That is why you and I must call for a constitutional reform. A constitution, if we don't change it, you should even bring an angel from heaven. Ghana will still have the problem we are having. If the root of the tree is bad, the fruit of the tree will be equally bad. The root of our democracy is the constitution. That is the soul of our country. There are so many things in it. That is why under Professor Atamos, he requested a reform, constitutional reform. The Ghanaians spoke that they want a change in our constitution. But you see, when it went to government, whether President Mills' government or President John Mohammed's government or President Akufazo's government, they were not ready and committed to the change. You know why? Because it favors them. But the people said, we don't want the president to appoint IGP again. But then the presidents don't want it. That is why you and I must demand 
that the constitution must strengthen our institutions. Every government derives its authority from the people. And the people says they are asking for a reform. So it is wrong for any president not to listen to the people. We have done a great job asking for constitutional reform so that we can have a better democracy and a better governance system. And yet all the presidents that have come and gone have refused to listen to the people. They have refused to listen to the people. They have refused to listen to you who have requested that there must be a change in our constitution, a reform in our constitution so that everybody can be respected and everybody can be included in the governance system. Our constitution, we are asking for that change and it was at the most who requested for that. It has been done so that when you are asking for um, a contract, they wouldn't ask you, do you have a party card? That is what the constitution wants to kill. The reform wants to kill that so that you can be given a job whether you have a party card or not. That is the kind of Ghana we want to build. And therefore, if today some are asking for the police to be neutral, they know how they control and manipulate. So both the opposition and the ruling government are equally guilty. They are equally guilty. And that is why we must strengthen our institutions so that every Ghanaian can feel safe and protected. Go out there and take advantage of this last week and register. And then when the time comes and there is need for the voting, you will then decide who becomes your president. I pray that may God strengthen all of us so that Ghana will be a great country for his glory.